Hi everyone, it's Puni. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe and give this video a like. You'll get an update on content related to typology, specifically ENFP and Enneagram 4, uh, Geek Therapy, video games, and parenting. This uh, subject that I'm thinking about is a tendency that we ENFPs, INFPs, um, idealists, and maybe Enneagram 4, the heart-centered types, tend to do, but I'll focus primarily on Enneagram 4 and FI users, strong FI users. I, I think that when we meet someone and we're in relationships, we tend to idealize a lot. I've mentioned this several times in my NFP relationship videos, and it is a consistent theme, I think, that comes across in the groups when I have conversations or read posts related to ENFPs. They're really excited. They find someone new, and what all they see is the best, the best in a person, and that's wonderful. It's great that you can meet someone, and our superpower is to see possibility and um, optimism. We tend to lean towards optimism in the people that we like, and so we can actually see multiple possibilities of the potential of people. It's great. It really is, and yet when things are not congruent and we're allowing ourselves to consist consistently be in the lens of those rose-colored glasses, a lens of idealism, we may sooner or later meet a clash with time, space, and reality with how people actually are. So we disappoint ourselves, but we also let people down by not seeing them as they are. So this was just a brief note on the things that we tend to do in relationships where when we idealize someone, we get really close and happy, get excited, and then we start seeing the flaws pop up, and then maybe we start running away. I know that people who gravitate towards ENFPs or have relationships with us, there is a pattern, a correlation with our preference that we kind of like push and pull. We pursue and then we run away and people get confused because there is this aspect of us going MIA. So we're missing in action. It's one of my most popular videos because people get confused, um, whether you're the ENFP or you're the person in the ENFP's life, so like the ENFP just... They just disappeared. What happened? You know, um, there's different reasons for why we do that. Um, I'll link the video in the description so you can take a look at that. But also, you know, as I continue to make content on our preferences, on our type, I think it's important to reassess over the over the years, over time, to know that you're growing, that you have information to introspect on, because we're so um, we're so focused on personal growth and development that this would be uh, automatic really for an FI user. I think that to a certain degree, I think that if we challenge our values, of course, there's going to be backlash. There's going to be this um, defensiveness that comes out. But I think over time, if you're separate from the person who made the observation or the challenge to your identity or behaviors, there is space to grow. I think the hard part for us in the beginning is to be humble and to say that, hey, I am not perfect. And not to take it in a bad way, because if you're Enneagram 4, your worldview is suffering and I'm flawed. Um, I am a terrible human being and the things that people say are true. Uh, why, why wouldn't it be true? I'm a terrible person. I'm unworthy. I'm unlovable. So of course they would say that. And so when you're in this dark place of suffering as an Enneagram 4, or if you're an FI user, strong FI user who feels defensive because when people offer criticism, it's an attack on your identity, an attack on your person, please take this note of, you know, you want to grow as a person. It, it takes time to be open to criticism. It's not easy because some people don't always critique in the kindest ways. Some people are flat out mean. And so that makes perfect sense to run away, to stay away from people who are mean because they don't even consider your emotional state or how you're going to take it, the readiness for change or things like that. They just want to tell you that there's something wrong with you and they want to be mean at the same time. Like there's some people who are not considerate and that's very true too. So like there's this balance and things to look for. So when someone tells you this, these things or when you meet someone and you're being idealistic, so there's some things to think about. So one thing I think about is like, number one, is it true? When I think about someone and I'm thinking about their idealistic traits. Is it 100% true? You know, um, am I putting them on a pedestal? That's a great place to start because when you lead with NE, 
or um, strong idealism for romantic things, you may swing very far to the extreme of how you see someone. And then when you ask that question, hopefully you'll be open to challenging yourself and say, you know what, this is not 100% true. I may be exaggerating a little bit because I'm enamored. I am in, uh, you know, on the clouds. I'm endearing things that um, they do. I just love everything that they do. They're perfect. And yet nobody is perfect. They can be perfect for you. Um, and there's this like thing that seeing the potential is a great thing for other people. And yet when you're starting to feel this, it's uncomfortable sometimes when flashes of the present and the truth start clashing with your idealism. That's something that you have to work on individually because these people may or may not be doing anything out of the ordinary. They're just being themselves. And as an, an NFP, we may be, you know, hyping them up, believing in their best, which is awesome. Again, people need to hear that. I think it's nice to be supportive in that way. And yet, if no one is changing, if they're not really re reaching that potential, you're going to potentially disappoint yourself and you might get up and leave. You know, you might get so upset and realize, hey, uh, all of a sudden things have clicked and you're not what I thought you were. You're not what I expected. And that's very unfair for people. I've mentioned this a couple times in my NFP videos on relationships, um, but I think this is kind of like the caveat, a little different in terms of relationship patterns because I threw in this push-pull factor that we tend to do. So if you're pushing people away when they're not perfect and then pulling them back in when your idealism sets in, that is something to pair with the pendulum of change. You'll see that there is a a series of videos that I've made on the steps of change, the process of change, where you're going to swing back and forth if you do it with intention too. The whole part of change is it's cyclical. It, we face similar themes over and over again and we'll chip away at it and overcome and be successful and sometimes we will crash and burn <laughs> and then we will repeat the theme over and over again until we've moved on into the next layer of, of becoming our wholeness, you know, as we are whole our entire time and yet we kind of discard or ignore certain parts. Like in relationships, since NFPs do value interpersonal relationships, it's something to take note of and just continue to be intentional with what you're doing. Like even talking to people that you value about these patterns is very important. It's, you know, disclosing honestly, having this respect, like this is what I'm working on, this is my pattern, this is how I see you, is it true? Do you think that this is true about you too? And that would be a great question to ask someone, like this is how I think you're perfect and these are the reasons why I think you're perfect. They could say, that is totally not me or I am, um, I'm flattered um, and then there's some truth to it. They could say that this part is, I think is true, this part I don't think is true at all. Like I think you might set yourself up for disappointment if you think that this is my strength or what I'm really good at or what you see. So the, again, open dialogue, because if you're an idealist with assumptions and, and dreams and uh, viewing things in terms of possibility and the best of someone, they might have some input too on what they think is truth to how they actually are. And then you can kind of meet in the middle or you can have them guide you to be more grounded in reality. And that's something I think is very respectful something to honor the relationship. So those are my thoughts related to that. Please let me know in the comments what you think about uh, things I talked about, the push-pull relationship, the idealism of NFPs, and then ways that we tend to sabotage or um, run away from things that we don't think we're worthy of when people are actually their real selves. So I, I look forward to chatting you the next video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Take care.